Now we're going to look at three things you can do to organize your project before you start mixing. We're going to move some tracks around, we're going to use track folders, and we're going to do some color coding. So first let's talk about moving tracks. So we're going to move tracks around to group them conceptually. So drums and percussion are together, the vocals are together. I like to put my rhythmic tracks at the top of the session and my melodic tracks at the bottom. But you can do this in whatever way makes sense to you. We're going to do this to keep things organized. And if you keep the same approach with all your work, you can really streamline your workflow. So our session is a little disorganized in this regard right now. We've simply been adding new tracks after the last track without much rhyme or reason, just whatever we happen to be working on next. So organizing the tracks is as simple as dragging them up or down to where we'd like them to be in the session. Now I'd like to be able to see as many tracks as possible, so I'm going to decrease the track height to the minimum just using the page down button. Just hit that a few times. Okay, there we go. Now we can see all of our tracks. First thing I want to do is put the drums and the percussion at the top of the project. Now they're actually already together, so I can select them just clicking on start with the drums and then holding shift, click on the shaker and the maraca track. So I've got all three tracks selected. And now I just click and drag these to the top. Pretty simple. Next, I'd like the, the bass, followed by the acoustic guitar, which is already there. I'm going to put the keyboard, the lead guitar, the vocal, and the harmony. So now I've got all the tracks in the order I want them to be in. So now I'd like to go one step further and show you how to create track folders to further organize and control the tracks in your project. So in addition to grouping our tracks together, folders act as a submaster track. And that means that all of the tracks inside the folder flow through that folder track before going out to our master fader. And this is often referred to as busing. You can think of the tracks as using the bus to get to their destination, and you can actually literally think about it like a bus. You put a bunch of people on a bus and they all go to the same place. Well, you put a bunch of tracks in a folder, and it's like a bus that sends them all to the same place. And eventually, it all ends up at your master fader, which is also sometimes referred to as a bus. Sometimes you hear the master bus, and that's what they're talking about. All the tracks, subgroups, folders, whatever in your project are going to end up on that master bus. And eventually, they end up at your speakers or your headphones. When tracks are in a track folder, we can now control the level, mute, and solo of all the tracks inside the folder track with the folder track controls. That also means that if there are any effects we put on this track, they will affect all the tracks inside the folder. And we'll be talking more about effects in a different video. Let's start by putting the drums and the two shaker tracks together into a folder. So first thing we need to do is create a new track. Just going to use Control T or Command T on a Mac. So now I've got this new track just kind of showed up here under my lead guitar. And I want to drag that above my drum tracks. I'm going to name it Drums and Perk. Now, it's not a folder track yet, it's just a track. So what we need to do is select the tracks we want to be in this folder. So that's the drums, the shaker, and the maraca. Now I'm going to grab these and I'm going to drag them up towards what I want to be the folder track. And you'll notice this blue line pops up. On a Mac, there's a line, but it's not as obvious, but you'll see it. And what I want to have happen is I want it on the left-hand side of it, I want that line just to get a little bit shorter. And that's going to let me know that I'm going to drag those selected tracks into the folder track above it. So I'm going to just move up. There we go. When I see it like that, if I let go, now these tracks are inside this drum and percussion folder track. And you can tell because Reaper shows us that the drums and shaker tracks are now indented. And that's sort of the signal that says their output is being sent to the folder track and then being sent to the master fader. So now we can mute, solo, and change the volume of all the drums and percussion at the same time. If we want to change the level of an individual shaker track, we can still do that by using the individual's track controls. I'll just show you that right now. I'm just going to play from here, from a solo. And if I hit solo on the whole drums and percussion, we get both the drums and the shakers. I can just, I can mute the drums. Oh, uh, those three tracks are actually still selected. I'm just going to make sure I just have the drums selected. 
So now we just hear the shakers, drums and shakers. And then this volume control will work with the, will change the level of everything. So everything in that folder. So that's actually really, really handy. So now we're going to do the same thing for the vocals, putting the lead and harmony vocals into one folder track. So I'm just going to actually double click in the track area down here to create my track and I'll call this vocals. And you may notice I've been using all caps for these because these are folder tracks and that's just a way that I do it so that I can quickly see that it's a folder track just by using all caps as my track names. So I'm just going to drag that above my two vocals, select the two vocal tracks, just hold shift, click to select the two and again, click and drag it up and wait till that bar gets a little shorter. And now our vocals, our harmony vocal and our main vocal are in the vocal folder. So the last thing I want to do to organize my project is to color code my tracks. If my tracks are color coded and I use the same colors for each project I work in, it can really speed up workflow. So making the drums purple every time means that if I see purple tracks, I know those tracks are drums without even having to read the labels. So let's start at the top. So I'm going to select all my drum and percussion tracks, so including the folder. So I'll start with the folder and then holding shift, click on the last track I want selected. And that will make sure that all four of these are selected. Now all I need to do is right click on any one of those, go to track color. I'm going to go to set custom color. And I'm going to use this purple because I like this purple. Click OK. And now these tracks have been made purple. And in fact, down here in the mixer area, we also see these have been made purple. And because they're selected, they still have a very light background. If I click off here, you'll see there's, they've got this kind of light purpley background here. So now I can quickly see that these purple tracks are drums and shakers. And I just know that. And I'm going to go through the rest of the tracks and color code them the way I like them. I'll just do the bass now. So the bass isn't part of a group, so I just need to select the one track, right click, go to track color, set tracks to custom color, and I'll do this in a baby blue, say okay. Now I can quickly see the bass is blue. Now I'll continue through until my project is completely organized and color coded just the way I like. This can make mixing a lot more fun because you don't have to spend time hunting for the tracks you want to work on.